Hello there. This is part one of a video where we take a look at a set of Creighton irons and then a brief look at the history of the brand and some of the other irons that they made. In part two, I'll be playing nine holes match play against a course in the bogey format using the irons and wood featured in this video. So please watch that as well. Anyway, let's look at the clubs. As usual, we'll start with the woods. Hopefully the sharp eye among you will have spotted that we only have one wood and that's all I, I'm going to be playing when I play this set. Uh, I think I've featured this wood before. It's a Slazinger uh, power thrust model. There's the sole plate there. And these were produced when Slazinger um, was in partnership with the Ben Hogan company. Uh, the Ben Hogan power thrust was a model and this is a, I presume, some leftover stock after the uh, agreement uh, was dissolved. So Slazinger power thrust made in England, it's a nice persimmon head, uh, four screw face, very large screws on these ones, whether that means you get extra distance when you're hitting out the screws, I don't know. Uh, nice insert with a white um, line at the back there, which will help in aligning the, the club. Uh, nice tidy bit of whipping on it, and all in all it's in a, a very good shape. We can see there, cut into the toe, the speed slot, which was a, a Hogan feature on a lot of uh, Ben Hogan woods. Um, on the shaft, we've got no shaft label as such, and the grip is a uh, pro only. Uh, he made that one, hasn't got any other markings on it. So I assume this has been re-gripped at some, st some stage from the original grip that would have been on there. It's a little bit hard, but it's, it's playable. So... That's the, uh, the wood that I'll be using, Slazenger Power Thrust 2 wood. Let's move on to the irons now. Moving on to the irons then, and these are by uh, the Creighton Golf Company Limited, which was set up, um, as far as I can tell, in 1966 by John Letters, um, after Dunlop had acquired the John Letters Company uh, in 1958, I think it was, I think there was a agreement that uh, John Letters wouldn't uh, start another company uh, for uh, several years and this uh, was the beginning of that company, uh, Craigs and Golf. I'll talk about this more um, when I discuss the company in a little bit more detail. So let's just uh, have a look at the clubs now. Um, as we can see, it's um, a... well. So I suppose it's a kind of muscle back style. Uh, we've got um, weight concentrated in the centre of the head, uh, which, um, if we are to believe modern technology, uh, modern thinking, would make these very difficult to play for the average golfer. But they were a set that was available and sold to the average golfer. Um, so again, it leads us to that question: Are blades uh, as difficult to to hit? as the marketing companies lead us to believe. So let's have a look at the clubs then. As I say, we've got a nice um, sort of muscle back style there with the name Royal Gold, which is the name of this model. And we've got a GC uh, monogram there, Creighton Golf, uh, CG, sorry, I should say. Um, and that's picked out in gold. The Royal Gold is in black uh, on the face. A uh, nice... Um, Nice face to the club. We've got uh, a couple of lines there, uh, boxing the, the grooves in. Slightly frosted face and the uh, hosel has got um, a, a couple of bands and diamond and line patterns. The ferrule, nice attractive ferrule in black and gold which mirrors the, uh, the Royal Gold's uh, name there. And if we look on the sole of the club, I can get that round so we can get it in focus. We can see that it says Craigton Golf Company Limited, Scotland, and that's a number four iron. Now the, <coughs> anybody that knows John Letters will recognise that that's very similar to a John Letters club. And if I can just uh, bring one across here, we can compare the two. I'll try not to get caught up in my cables. Right, <laughs> so this is a Gary Player um, master model iron, very similar period. Uh, to the Royal Gold we're looking at here and if we look at the soles of the two clubs we can see it's a very similar layout. The fours are very similar 
uh, it's the same font anyway. Scotland is the same uh, capital lettering. You know, John Letters is a signature, and Crate and Golf, um, Crate and Golf Company Limited is in capitals on the Crate and Club. Um, but very similar uh, style, almost identical uh, hosel lengths. So there's definitely uh, a bit of carryover by. by uh, John Letters in from the John Letters Company into the Crate and Golf Company. <clears throat> when Crate and Golf was started, he initially bought out two models. One was the Royal Gold here, and the other was the Classic, which very much follows this uh, master model uh, style of design. And I'll show you some pictures of that uh, when we look at the, the club in more detail. All right, let's put the uh, John Letters Gary Player back. And we can talk a bit more about the uh, crates and ones that we have here. So in the set we've got 3 uh, to 10. It doesn't have a pitching wedge. It's got a 10, um, a 10 iron, which is the same loft as a pitching wedge would be. I'll bring the lofts up um, when I finish the video. But as you can see, it's a 10 iron rather than uh, a pitching wedge. And as is often the case, it's a slightly different style to the rest of the clubs. Same as the uh, sand iron here, bring that one in. Nice uh, thick sole on the sand iron, it's got a nice weight to it. And again, it's that same style as the, the 10 iron. We have a look at the grips. Uh, <coughs> if you watched the video prior to this one, you'll know that I've just re-gripped this set. Uh, so the grips, I can tell you, are, uh, what are they? Tour Pride grip. Who Tour Pride is, I've no idea. Uh, some generic name. Um, Tour Pride there. Shaft bands are uh, True Temper Dynamic, regular flex. So, nice shaft. Uh, no expense was spared in the making of these clubs. They are a, definitely a, a good quality set. Right, I think that uh, brings us to the end of the irons. And let's have a look at the putter now. Oh, well, here's the putter then. I can't remember whether I've featured this one before or not. Um, if I haven't, it's high time I did. If I had, then there's no problem uh, featuring it again because it's a nice putter. As you can see, it's a uh, flanged blade, very much in the uh, Spalding HB style, the Wilson 8802, etc. Quite a bit of offset on it, which doesn't uh, really suit my eye. And another thing I'm not mad keen on is there's a bit of taper on the top line there. Um, and it's always a little bit off-putting. You're never quite sure which one you've lined the put up with, the back of the uh, top line or the front. Uh, nice ferrule on it though. Um, red, white, red. The club's actually by uh, Leyland, who were a sort of mid mid to uh, budget end manufacturer for the main part we can see their mark there Leyland autograph the autograph refers to the uh, name on the sole which is Ralph Moffitt uh, I think he was a Ryder Cup player uh, I'll bring up a little bit of information about him because I can't remember it off the top of my head um, but yeah that's the, the putter that I'll be using uh, just have a quick look at the shaft we got anything on there I think that's a true temper shaft band 325 refers to the distance to the first um, the first uh, step down there and the grip itself is a very nice leather grip with a uh, flat uh, portion there to help line the, uh, the, the putter up so you get your fingers on there that's on the the top of the putter as you look down the collar there looks as though it's moved a little bit because there's a bit of a step there i think that should be pushed up a little bit further but it's obviously moved at some point during the putter's life right that's the putter then time now to take a look at the history of crate and golf and to do that it's helpful to consider the john letters family and company the John Letters name has a respected and influential place in British golf history. This family tree is to the best of my knowledge correct. The company was originally founded in 1918 and John Letters Jr. joined the company in the 1930s. It was he who built the company up to be the major player it became, with a worldwide reputation for quality. In 1957, Dunlop, 
who in the world of golf had until this time been known primarily for their golf balls, acquired the John Letters name and Hillington factory in order to establish a British base for golf club manufacture. They began producing Dunlop branded clubs, but continued to produce John Letters clubs at the same time. John Letters was an established and respected name, so that they'd have been daft not to. John Letters Jr. remained as managing director for nine years, and I believe that other members of the Letters family also continued to work under the Dunlop ownership. In 1966, John Letters Jr. left the John Letters Company and started Creighton Golf, although it appears from this advert that it was initially called J Letters Creighton Limited. I assume that this contravened an agreement not to use the John Letters name, as not long afterwards the company name is shown as Creighton Golf Company Limited. The company was situated on Creighton Industrial Estate in Glasgow. From the beginning, Creighton set out to make high quality clubs. The earliest adverts I've found are this one from Golf World magazine dated July 1966, and this one from the Professional Golfers Association magazine dated August 1966, and both emphasised the desire for quality. The company was taken over by Colgate Palmolive in 1974, and in the Golf World magazine equipment list for April 1983, it's shown under the Pro Sport Limited name. The last datable evidence I can find for them is in the Golf World magazine equipment list for April 1989 when they're still being distributed by Pro Sport Limited and they only have one club listed, the Craig Royal. I want to take a look at some of the irons produced by Craigton then. Of the three clubs mentioned in that first advert, the classic unsurprisingly follows the John Letters master model design, a style that had proven its worth over the years. The club shown here must be an early example. Note the use of the J Letters name on the sole and the JL Diamond logo rather than the later CG logo. The Royal Gold, which is our feature club in this video, has as far as I can tell borrowed nothing from previous John Letters and Co designs, but it does reappear in several variations for Creighton as we'll see. This again is an early version because it has the, the JL logo and the John Letters name on the sole, unlike the, um, the set that I've featured. The third model, the Pro Power, is one that doesn't seem to have sold so well. In fact, this is the best picture I've been able to find for it. And again, note the JL logo, so this is probably an early version. Here we have one of those variations on the Royal Gold. This one is the Barbara Romack model, dating to 1968. Barbara Romack was an American who had a strong amateur career in the mid to late 1950s before she joined the LPGA Tour in 1958, where she had one win. I can only assume that Creighton's strong export business was the reason for this otherwise bizarre endorsement. And I guess from a similar date, it's this one, the John Frew. As far as I can tell, John Frew was professional at Barry St Edmunds Golf Club um, between 1959 and 1980. He had uh, some uh, success in local competitions, including uh, winning the Suffolk PGA Stroke Play title five times, but I can't imagine he was well enough known to um, sell clubs uh, off his own name. So I assume that these were made uh, as a special order from John Frew to sell to the members at his golf club. Next, the Craig Royal, not the one mentioned in the 1989 magazine quoted previously, but an earlier version, probably late 1960s. Then we have the classic Mark II Neil Coles from 1968. I assume that the Mark II here refers to the classic and not Neil Coles, as this differs from the earlier classic model. And here is another Neil Coles, which I think is later, although I have no firm evidence of this. The Peter Townsend from 1969. Townsend was in the same group of aspiring golfers as Tony Jacklin. The Christy O'Connor, very similar to the second Neil Coles version we saw. This one is from 1971, so maybe that could help date the second Neil Coles club too. The Bobby Cole Thunderer, another in the Royal Gold Mould. Cole was a South African golfer who turned professional in 1967 and had a successful career in South Africa, Europe and America. Now the model C100 Gravity Controlled. 
a bit of a mouthful, introduced in 1973, and the C100 introduced in 1975. Creighton also produced a decent range of ladies clubs. We've already seen the Barbara Romack model, and this is the Lady Craig, another master model style iron. Next, the Lady Craig. And the Lady Craig C100. Harry Player, who had a good relationship with John Letters when he was at the John Letters Company, appears on these irons, although I'm not sure what's going on really. The ferrules are all the same, but there are three distinct head stampings on show here. Here is the Thunderer from 1976, after Colgate Palmolive had acquired the company. And here is another Thunderer model, I'm not sure what this one uh, dates to. There seems to be little in the way of new models after 1980, and this is the most modern head I've come across. The CR logo is intriguing. I wonder if there was some connection with Ram, as Ram Golf produced a whole range of Creighton model clubs. Creighton also produced a large range of putters and woods. The woods I've come across have all been laminated maple. While well, in the putters there are some interesting designs. Well, I'm not going to go into those in this video. Right, well that sums up most of the irons that I've seen. So now let's just have a quick summary of the irons that I'm going to be using in the play section in part two. As I've already said, I'll be limiting myself to just the one wood, uh, Slazinger 2 wood, 14 degrees loft. The irons, as you can see, are about half a club stronger than my preferred uh, lofts apart from the pitching wedge uh, which is a little bit weaker and the putter is an attractive flanged blade style and now today's classic golf tip on the downswing try and make sure that the right elbow comes quickly down to the side of the body this will stop the right arm overpowering the swing, which can cause the club to come over the top, resulting in slices and loss of power, etc. Right, well that concludes this video. I um, hope you'll uh, watch the follow-up where I play the clubs uh, in a nine-hole uh, bogey match against the course. But until then, uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.